hello, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm Vasco, I'm a PhD student at the University of Chicago, and I'll be presenting our work on Mobile Poser, a real-time system for estimating full body pose and global translation using only the IMUs found in consumer devices such as phones, watches, and earbuds. This work was done in collaboration with Jesse Gao, who's over there taking photos, uh, and my advisors, Hank Hoffman and Karna Huja. Um, and so, motion capture technologies are essential for applications in fitness, in gaming, extended reality, uh, and rehabilitation. These are typically achieved with advanced external capture systems, such as Vicon or OptiTrack. But as you can see, these systems require numerous cameras and markers to be placed on the body and in an environment. And so while these systems offer high accuracy, they lack practicality for everyday use, especially for mobile, out-of-the-lab settings. The community has realized this, and we've seen this minimization effect towards using less number, uh, less and less number of sensors. For example, a typical capture system, such as Xsense, uses 17 on-body commercial IMUs to track full body posts, as compared to using multi-camera rigs, uh, ranging from 40 to 50 worn markers required by Vicon systems. Other work, such as Transpose, has further iterated on this and showed that full body post and translation can be achieved using only six uh, commercial Xsense IMUs. And most recently, in IMU Poser by The Great Vimo, uh, showcased that full body posts can be achieved from consumer IMUs found in, in iPhones, earbuds, and watches, which tend to be more noisy and have lower sampling rate than commercial ones. And so with this, uh, the trade-offs have become evident. As we move towards lower and lower fidelity IMUs, we observe a decrease in accuracy, more limited tracking capabilities, and no global translation. Uh, for example, as you can see here with power work uh, that uses consumer IMUs, you can no longer track 3D human translation, the movement uh, in 3D space, and we observe unnatural movements and jitter in the predictions. Mobile Poser extends such work to achieve higher accuracy and enable 3D global translation for applications such as mobile tracking, indoor localization, amongst many, many more. As you can see, I'm here walking somewhere at night in the middle of the University of Chicago. Uh, and so in a similar spirit uh, of WIST, I will provide a live demo of our system. Uh, unlike, uh, I don't have backup slides, so if this fails, I have no backup plan. So let's try. OK. So demo. <laughs> <laughs> Built in Unity. <laughs> okay, so here's me. I have my phone. I have my watch here, as you can see. I can say hello to you guys. Okay, maybe I cannot. Uh, so maybe there's some there's some issues with the internet here, but I'll try my best to, to demo as well as I can. But uh, it's tracking my full body posts, and it can track translation. So is it on? if I move around, it's free. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, move around. OK, OK. So, uh, so there might be some problems with the watch connectivity. But let's try something crazy. OK, I'm, I, I start here, right, in this weird location. I'm going to attempt to walk around the room, and I will attempt to return to the same place. Let, let's see. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a backup plan. <laughs> OK. OK. Okay, it, it, it kind of works, and I will promise that, <laughs> I, promise, I promise that it works. Okay, and now unfortunately we have to return to boring slides. I had to use a, uh, a router, which uh, yeah, may not work. And so, yeah, making excuses. Um, OK, so uh, what you saw was a, a demo of, of mobile poser estimating full body pose and global translation using just a regular smartwatch uh, and a smartphone. And so how did we do that? I will go a little bit through the, the implementation. First, we inject whatever subset of IMU data is available. Uh, in the example that we just had, we use a smartwatch and a smartphone uh, on the left hand and in the right pocket. Uh, and then we use a bidirectional LSTM to estimate full body 3D joint positions from the available IMU data. And so here's what it looks like. Here's me in some random room, and you can see that the estimated joint positions follow my movements very closely. 
Um, then in order to estimate and rig a 3D body mesh, uh, we employ a second bidirectional LSTM to regress joint rotations from the joint positions and the IMU data. Uh, again, let's take a look at what those predictions look like. So it estimates a full body 3D mesh here, uh, which does both uh, arm and lower body estimation. Yep. To model global translation, we estimate per frame velocity using two submodules. A foot ground contact estimator outputs the likelihood that each foot is contacting the ground, and it uses to estimate the body velocity. Uh, this approach helps capture natural body motions as the body movement is significantly influenced by the supporting foot's dynamics. Uh, then we use a root velocity regressor, which uses a neural network uh, to directly estimate global velocity to handle cases where no foot is contacting the ground, such as jumping. Uh, again, here's a visualization of the foot ground contact uh, estimator. We map the probability that each foot is contacting the ground to the color red, and uh, as it becomes more red, the probability that it's contacting the ground becomes higher. Uh, I'll play it again um, for those who have missed it. Uh, finally, this, uh, this output is fed through an off-the-shelf physics optimization step that refines the motion to satisfy physical constraints such as joint accelerations, torques, and ground reaction forces. And what that looks like here is this produces a body digitization that has very minimal jitter, it has no foot ground penetration, and has very, very minimal foot sliding here. And so? Here's my backup slide. So here we see an example of mobile poser running in real time. It determines uh, which devices are available. I, I start off uh, with three devices, and I take off my earphones. And it, here it is estimating in real time uh, my pose. So it estimates that I sit. And it estimates that I will walk, start walking around in space. And it estimates that I start running. And then also, at the end, it will estimate that I will start jumping. Um, and so because our approach does not rely on any external capture systems, it is resilient to environmental lighting changes. In this example, I will come into a room, and I will close the lights. Uh, and the estimation accuracy will not be affected by the lighting conditions. It is also, is also robust to occlusions. Here I am occluded, but it's, uh, it is not affected by it. Uh, to train mobile poser, we leverage, uh, similar to prior works, we leverage a large collection of motion capture data, which we synthesize IMU data from, and we have ground truth poses, and we can synthesize um, uh, per frame velocity as well. Uh, for full training details, using all the losses and all the model architecture, we'll refer to the readers to the paper. Uh, we evaluate mobile poser on three real-world inertial data sets. Uh, the first two data sets, DIP and total capture, collected IMU data using commercial-grade XSENS IMUs, which are uh, much higher quality uh, IMUs. The IMU poser data set, collected by Vimo, uh, collected IMU data using iPhone, Apple Watch, and earbuds, which better reflects the settings that we are targeting. Uh, we compare the error of mobile poser with prior works, and we find that we, uh, against IMU poser, we have a 12, around a 12.3% decrease uh, in error. And if you want the numbers broken down by the device location and the limbs, I have provided a graph here, but I've left them out of the presentation uh, because it is a little bit big. And so if you want details, again, please refer to the paper. We also measure translation error. How well does it measure my, my movement over time, assuming well, good calibration? Uh, and unsurprisingly, we found that a phone in the pocket gives the lowest error uh, as the legs capture most of the local motion data. And so if you have a phone in your pocket, that gives you the best estimation of movement over, over time. Um, and finally, we performed an ablation study. We want to understand what are the effects that full body pose has with translation. Recall that our translation networks use the estimated joint positions as input. And so the question is, what if we did not use the estimated joint positions and used IMU directly? Uh, in our study, we find that uh, the estimated full body uh, poses are actually extremely important for translation accuracy. We see that using the inferred pose as input improves the accuracy by almost 30%, which hints at the idea that uh, higher order digitization, such as full body pose, really greatly helps with lower order digitization, such as step counts. Um, but like all approaches, our technique has pros and cons. I will go through them quickly here. Uh, first, our approach requires a calibration. I calibrated very briefly at the beginning of the, uh, of the presentation, uh, which apparently was not very good, uh, because we need to match the sensor, the sensor corner frames of the sensor that we are wearing to that of the training data. And we have to, and we have to tell the system that this is my starting point. 
Um, and we note that in, uh, we only have to do this once in the beginning, and we don't have to do it over sessions. Uh, we're, we're actively working on minimizing this effort. Uh, secondly, as with most IMU-based methods, our techniques is also susceptible to drift. Uh, as you'll see, the movement over time um, drifts a little bit from its uh, ground truth positions. Uh, and this is very common in IMU-based methods. Lastly, the accuracy of, the, uh, of, our, of our system needs to match the desired applications. Um, so Mobile Poser works great for your uh, instrumented arm, but for applications such as rehabilitation, where, you're, where if you have an uninstrumented arm that you need to track, our system may not work as well. So it depends on the application that you want to solve and whether Mobile Poser is good enough for that. Uh, for example, if you, want, if you have only one watch and you have one phone, it might be OK for applications such as telepresence or gaming. Uh, and with that, I end my talk, and I thank everyone for listening. And I'm happy to take any questions. Two questions. Hi, uh, I'm Riku from CMU. A very interesting talk uh, mm -hmm. and great demo. I'm curious about the architecture of your approach. Mm -hmm. So you have first, you first estimate the joint, and then you have trained another network to train the uh, angle, joint angle, right? Yes, that's Why right. Why like, you try to train that? Why like, directly like, come up, you know, est uh, calculate the joint angle like, using kinematics? Uh, right, that's a great question. So it turns out that prior work has shown that IMUs consist of acceleration uh, and orientation data. If you just estimate rotation data, so you want to estimate the joint rotations. And IMUs, actually, if you want to predict the joint rotations, will be, we f will be like more uh, inclined to use just the rotation input of the IMU instead of the acceleration. Okay. And so what prior works have shown is that if you use predict 3D joint positions instead, it will better make use of the um, acceleration data. And so that is one of the um, uh, main motivations to also have this intermediate network to predict 3D joint positions. OK, oh, just a quick clarify. Uh, mm -hmm. So your second ne network only takes the joint uh, position as input? Yes. Not in IMU. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, hello. I'm Harish from University of Texas Arlington. Uh, it was a very nice presentation. Um, uh, it's just a quick question. So. Is your work really limited uh, because of the connectivity between devices? So does this, I mean, uh, like, it, it does depend on uh, some of the wireless connectivities between the devices in various locations? Uh, actually, it, it does not really. But I need to stream the data from my devices to my computer for the live visualization. And that's, um, that's where the uh, limitation came from. And okay, in order to, to save myself, I will present the live visualization of it working, hopefully. It works, it works, it, it, yeah, it requires it to stream the data and it's over there, so the connection is a little bit far away. I do okay. apologize. Yeah, um, and also like, uh, um, so what kind of actions have you exactly tried? Like, ha have you went to most many complex motions or is it like it's just limited to the normal walking motions or the hand and leg motions, is it like that? Or have you tried any complex sp stuff? Uh, that's a great question. Um, actually, we do work with, across many different motions. It does depend on the configuration of the number of devices that you have. For example, uh, if you only have a watch, it's have, for example, if you want to perform push-up, which is quite difficult because your, your watch stays, uh, stays fixed on the ground. Yeah. Um, and um, so it would require maybe like a phone or earbuds in order to estimate. But it does estimate uh, complex motions quite well. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you.